Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. The Philippines is not the Western's uh, past, but the future. Um, I just want to give some reasons why it's that way and why a lot of people I really don't understand why they can't see it. There's been an influx of immigration um, to create some instability, um, but it's also to help drive down salaries, etc. But that's part and parcel, you either agree or disagree. Um, in the UK, uh, the influx of Polish workers, etc., was to actually reduce the cost of construction labour in the UK, uh, especially in central London. Um, but nobody really talks about that, but that's, that's why it was a big thing in the first place. Um, but what you've got is a dumbing down of the education system pretty much everywhere, really is everywhere. Um, but you've also got the two social classes. You've got those that are going to private schools and you've got those are going to the school down the road that's paid for by your taxes. What you end up with is a divide like this because the one down the road, they're teaching you about Romans and full of useless information um, because it's for conformity. It's not for coming out a better rounded person because you'll hear them say rounded person what i mean what's the hell is a rounded person education is about enhancing your knowledge and experiences and developing the person being all rounded about gay rights and all this stuff which is a big thing in the moment in the uk is like it's got no need in the education system it's got nothing to do with what people need to get through life um, whether they hate or like gay people is down to a their mentality, morals, etc. But it, they don't need a course on it. They need course on things like literacy, uh, numeracy, things that they actually physically need to understand and be capable of doing in their working lives. And that's being dumbed down like it is, so that they can have all these little media studies and all this other um, non-functional material. Because if you've got the basics, if you're good at math, good at English, good at whatever, multilingual, etc., you can get a job easily. Not a problem, because you have the basics, because everything relies on those. Um, in the Philippines, it's been shown that exams and stuff being in Tagalog um, the kids suffer with it if they're from different islands with different languages because if you can't grasp Tagalog then everything else is a failure because they don't understand um, what they're trying to learn because it's not in their native tongue um, doesn't matter if it's math doesn't matter what it is if you're taught something in a foreign language you're gonna struggle if you struggle with that language so that's very similar. Um, if you if you break down the foundations to a point where people are leaving school and ideally need to go to college so they can learn to read and write, you have a problem. So from that aspect, you've got the divide going because the school down the road is educating to, I don't know what, it's like a hippie experience. Um, the private schools, they concentrate on first thing is they do this thing where they live in a lot the reason for that is it creates independence the independence also creates people a lot stronger um, as individuals for leadership because a lot of the time um, in leadership it can be quite lonely because you're firing people and the way they treat people um, it makes them a stronger person that way. doesn't mean that the person who stays at home with their parents is any worse off, but this is the thinking behind it. Um, it probably makes the person more um, aggressive in how they treat people because they don't value them, value them in the same way. Um, you've got the way the whole system's set up because 
they're teaching people for leadership um they'll study latin and stuff which takes everything hello back to the basics but the, when languages are formed in the west they're they're formed on latin and i think there's a i can't remember the name for the the other uh language but everything goes back to them so if you can take that back to that level that's you set for legal occupations or political co occupations when um, you actually understand Latin. And that's just a small thing. That's not pushing the boat out with like, oh, they, um, they have all this extra equipment and stuff. A lot of time they don't need it. It's not to do with equipment. It's to do with what they're being taught and how they're being taught. Not, oh look, um, we've got multimedia. Because I'll tell you now, do you think they have all these bloody tabs and everything else? I, no, they don't need it. It's not for, that's not for education. All that does is decrease attention spans. Um, it's not gonna help unless you're actually just gonna be, uh, what do you call it? Developing a very specific way. Um, because, it apps and stuff what do they do they work in a very structured manner but when you're talking about learning and studying in a private school you're going to have good libraries you're going to have um, extra studies they push them for extra lessons they'll, they'll be in uh, education extra education lessons and stuff to keep the standards up etc in the public schools, um, that doesn't happen. The emphasis on reading and writing, etc., and doing your homework is your parents' problem. It's not your problem. It's not the school's problem. It's your parents. And as we know in the UK, there's a lot of families which were the parents are useless. So they're just creating the next generous generation of useless people by not actually um, improving where there's a failing in the system, but simply go, it's not our problem. So you've got those two divides going on all there, and that's been going on a long time anyway. Um, where the UK fell down is when it went all hippie and it dumbed down the, the system for the wrong reasons, um, or maybe right reasons, depending how you want to look at it. Um, it moved away from the basic structure and started to go that everyone should be able to do whatever they want, even though they're not capable. Um, and started creating this foundation where the basics should always be the foundation of everything. Um, when you do that, it doesn't matter about conforming to a, a certain formula. It, it, it basically turns around and basically gives you the foundations, regardless of what school you go to. Um, because that's what you need through life. If you can't read and write, you're gonna struggle. How many people leave school without being able to read and write properly? Nobody will be able to tell you because they dumb the figures down. So anyway, that's schooling. Next thing is this whole uh, thing about um, everybody getting a gold star. I don't understand it. it it's not something I've seen taught anywhere but the British public schools. It's, I say public as in government owned, government paid for, uh, taxpayer paid for, not private. So the funny thing is in the UK, public school also means private. Um, but it's the ones that are for, you have kids and they just go there. There's no cost to them um, besides your taxes. Um, but. I haven't actually seen the, because I, I went to a military school, so we're quite competitive in the way we're taught. We have teams for everything. You have to compete to get on the team. You have to compete at a, what do you call it, at a national, you know, you've got to be able to compete in the first place. In the West, that seems to be declining. You know, it's all like, well, if you turn up for training, you can be on the team. It's not like, well, if you're crap, you can't play. Um, it's, it's bizarre, bizarre. 
But anyway, that's it's going back to schooling. But that whole thing means that when you go to a job, you've got people that are aggressively taught the, for leadership how to move forward and how to network. Because networking has more to do with business these days than actual ability. Um, I see it all the time. Uh, corporate nepotism is very, very common. Um, it's vulgar, but it's common. And that's why a part of what they these people do is they network from when they're children, but also the parents network with the other parents because they use the whole network, whether it's parent to parent, parent to child, etc., etc. They will use everything they have to get ahead in life. And it's all part and parcel of how they're educated and how they understand people can be manipulated. And also it's an accepted culture. It's something that a lot of people will say, well, I don't do that, I have morals and uh, ethics, etc. Um, but guess what? You're in the same boat as me, where you have morals and ethics and won't just employ somebody because you know them. Um, which, I mean, it suits me. I mean, to be honest, a lot of time I, well, I, I get my work because of, not because of my network of friends, but because my network of people that know I can do my job. Um, so that, that's where my network comes from. But at the same time, would I be further up the tree if I was um, playing golf at the weekend, etc.? Of course I would, without a doubt. Facilities management is notoriously famous for it. A lot of the deals get done on the golf course. But at the same time, that's the way society is going. You've got this layer getting created. Because you've got people like ourselves being taught, you must have ethics, you must have morals, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? At the top, what have we got? Um, you've got people that are leaving military service, officers, etc. that take these jobs at the top because their buddies are there already. Um, you've got people that um, get involved with these different businesses from different angles. For example, say an officer is in charge of logistics um, and a supplier is willing to provide X, Y, Z and a little pension plan where somebody joins that business later on. That sort of thing is very common. Um, this is where that layer of nepotism comes in. But at the same time, when they hop in, they'll pull their other resources that they've known from military service at an officer level. Um, and at the same time, they hop into other NHS or other government sectors and also they'll hop into so you've got them leaking into the government you've got them leaking into uh, military service corporate world etc at the top and it's all the same little people it's why you have career politicians you look at a family now and how many of them are actually politically active is because of nepotism because it's something they that they wouldn't have control of in the normal world, but they do in the corporate world. Um, because what happens is, somebody becomes a politician. Um, they do the term the politician, this is in Europe. Um, then they become a Euro MP. Um, then they, they hire their wife as a secretary, their, their kids as, um, secretaries, understaff, or whatever, and then they slowly go from one person being an MP to the entire family. And then it becomes their friends, and then their friends interlink, and they all go to school together. So, like in the UK, you've got your Conservative and Labour, they act as if they're playing off each other. The reality is, they all go to the same schools. Their kids go to the same schools. They socialise together. Um, there is no rivalry. It's false. It's why they're so similar today, because it's a bit like car developers, you know, people design cars, they develop the software, eventually the software starts making all the cars look the same, you know, like when you look at Audi, uh, BMW, Mercedes, etc, et they're looking very, very similar in design, the aerodynamics start becoming a similar pattern, and that's what's happened in the West. 
basically. You've got this social class that's created a world for itself and at the same time devaluing everything underneath it. Because um, obviously the more you devalue those underneath it, the easier it is to maintain stuff at the top, even if you're incompetent. Um, because incompetence becomes irrelevant if you don't recognize anybody that actually does all the work. Um, so yeah, that's where the West is going. Um, that's why I say, look at the Philippines. That's what we're ending up with. You know your frustration with no control over the politics? Does it remind you of somewhere? These people that assume they can just stick expenses of irrelevant amounts onto um, the taxpayer, does it remind you of somewhere? Does the corruption that's going through everything at the moment remind you of somewhere? Because it's what's happening in the West. All that debt that was created and the billions that were made by bankers, because they, they say bankers, it's not just bankers. Come on, let's be fair. Bankers have bonuses. There's a lot of people that have had significantly wealth growth at the top of the tree. Um, they didn't suffer when all this went down the toilet because they knew it was going to happen. They dumped debt. So what's happening? Well, you, your their value has gone like that and yours has gone like that does it remind you of somewhere and that's why i say to people i'm quite aggressive with this because the fact is if you're not careful it will get to the point of no recovery um because i'll be honest the uk doesn't riot or complain you can, it's let the government since it was under blair bring in rules and stuff that people are scared to do anything um, it's bizarre because people are so aggressive on things like Facebook, but the reality is you won't get them on the street protesting, they'd rather watch X Factor. Um, it would have to have a shift that really destroys the country, and it ain't going to happen. Why isn't it going to happen? Because like in the Philippines, you get this level where people are sustainable. They've got their food, they've got their beer, whatever. They're going through life on this even keel. It's not great, it's not fantastic, but it's just that line that stops people going against the government. Um, and that's what you've got in the UK. And I would say other countries are exactly the same. You've got a lot of frustrated people who are saying, I'm sick of this, sick of that, immigration this, blah, blah, blah. What are they going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. And that's the reality. And you've now created the formula to create the divide between the rich and the poor to this level. Um, and it's no benefit to anybody but those at the top. And eventually it affects them as well because as we're seeing, quality generally is declining everywhere. Um, because people are getting rid of artisans and stuff. We'll get Chinese imports in, it's cheaper. Um, yeah, that, that works. Um, a little a little fact here. Economies can't survive on purely capitalism. Capitalism is just money. Money is just a printable thing. If people lose faith in it, it collapses. It's why Greece has a run on the banks and it has detrimental effects to the economy. economy. What economies need to really survive is the basics. The basics are having something what people want um having self-sufficiency having resources now like south korea with exporting doctors and um developing their economy that way um same as venezuela did it cuba did it they export doctors for resources that's why they create stability in those countries um uh, people go oh yeah but we you know we don't have but you've got to look at the fact that that's their export. US has loads of resources, but it's got a ridiculous amount of debt. UK has very little resources and a ridiculous amount of debt. Um, it it's survived on its old empire, which is dwindling on a regular basis. And you've got India now wanting compensation for our days there. Um, 
I'm not saying nothing. Well, the, the point is, there is nothing of value. Um, the UK has stripped away everything it has. It's sold off every government asset. It's turned around and dumbed down its education system when it used to have some of the best engineers on the planet. It was famous for its medical uh, research and stuff. It's given away everything. Um, and why? Because this top layer couldn't care less. It doesn't affect them in the slightest. Because like the Philippines, you got the guy down here, which is pushed right down here, and then you got the guys at the top, couldn't care less about them. And if you're at the top, it doesn't matter. You can sell off resources till the, the cows come home because there's always something to sell. Um, but the people down here are the ones that pay for it. All right, thanks for watching.